of course, totally unqualified to sit over here. So, little overwhelmed because I don't deserve to sit over here. Uh, when I was very young, at that time, I, I was learning dance. I was learning classical dance and uh, the first performance I ever gave, I think maybe I was 10 years old or something, very young. And uh, it was a competition which almost everybody, you know, different people used to come and perform. And uh, I came, I entered, people clapped and I forgot everything. <laughs> This is what I've been remembering all through. But I know over there, my own caliber was at stake. Over here, after saying the prayers, the whole parampara is there. So I'm just an instrument speaking. And also, whatever we are doing, I'm part of a team. And uh, this time I have been asked to speak. But doesn't mean that whatever I'm going to speak is anything to do with me. It's just... I was at the right time and the right place. I was in the, you know, I just got into it. So that's why, and the blessings of, you know, association of all the devotees who have always guided everybody sitting over here. So I seek your blessings. So when I was asked to speak and what does, actually Radha Gopinath represents for me, I thought of three words three things I thought of and there was causeless compassion, unlimited reciprocation and no rejection. And then I was thinking of Srila Prabhupada, causeless compassion of like the drama of course showed us that how he reached out at the age of 70 rejecting no one, not seeing his health or anything and just reached out to people whom, who couldn't reach him. And initially I think the reciprocation was only from his side. Nobody was, he was the only one who was doing services. Nobody was help, helping him. To the extent he helped out in the form of the affection he gave them and uh, prasad of course he had kept that prasad gulab jamun right outside anybody who thought of leaving also would see the gulab jamun and say let me pop some in my mouth and then you know they didn't feel like going in fact came back inside and you know maybe went off to sleep and some of the disciples of Srila Prabhupada always said that we didn't understand what he said what he spoke but we understood that this man hasn't come to cheat us. That's it. There was no, nothing, only thing was the love which they were receiving, they felt they had never received it before. That was the mercy of, he became the ever well-wisher. And who were these people? Of course, some people were educated, but he, they didn't understand the philosophy because it was com completely alien to them. So he gave them Kirtan, which they enjoyed the music. Had just visited the Tomskin Square Park, New York recently and realized what Srila Prabhupada did. In fact, I mentioned it to His Holiness Radhanath Swami Maharaj also when we met over there. That what kind of, you know, purity he had to change the hearts of people who had so much distraction. And since he pointed the stick in this direction, where the temple came about, where Sri Sri Radha Gopinath is now sitting, that stick did all the wonders, brought about all the devotees, all the paraphernalia for that causeless compassion, unlimited reciprocation and no rejection which became the foundation of Sri Sri Radha Gopinath. Nobody was ever rejected on any grounds. And people who couldn't come, the very devotion, the very bhakti, which was only at the lotus feet of Sri Sri Radha Gopinath, 
became came in the fluid form like mother ganga like mother ganga came from his feet bhakti is coming from his feet and it reached out to people who had no connection who had no inclination to come to the temple who were busy in kitty parties in clubs in concerts in drugs in depression they had no no inclination to come to the temple so such people had to be reached out to and for that he made ways he gave the intelligence to various devotees to do it so i'm going to share some of the things which have happened some of them are um, i personally experienced and some are other people's experiences which have been told to me over a period of time and it's not everything which is happening over here presently since i'm asked to speak on the present it's not something which is this is the only thing which is happening it's like an unlimited ocean of devotional service which is going on in this temple i think nobody knows each one itself each devotee over here is a ocean by himself or you know herself and uh, out of the three principles like prabhu ji was mentioning actually we were having a talk and uh, in that saying out of the three principles naam ruchi vaishnav seva jeev daya so naam ruchi is for yourself vaishnav seva is to serve others jeev daya actually ultimately it's for yourself when we go out to reach people reach out to people it's not other people we are you know helping when we are trying to do jeev daya actually the only jeev which is benefiting other jeevs gopinath can reach out to them by themselves there is you know he doesn't need us <laughs> any one of us but by causeless mercy the way chaitanya mahaprabhu said that i have so many fruits to distribute i need so many more people to do that so if we want to when we start try to distribute these fruits we are doing jeev daya to ourselves that's what you know i understood by the association of all, all of you devotees and i've seen so many examples so many examples i have made such close friendships maybe i'm not so much in touch with them at this point of time who have guided me but i seek everybody's blessings today so like i was talking about the whole journey began with a kitty party so there was a kitty party which used to happen there were about about 20 30 ladies in there and what do kitty parties what does kitty party has housey and you know dressing up and criticizing and gossiping since i have to talk a lot so i'm not going to go to go into detail but i'll tell you when krishna enters your heart what happens so where there is criticism and gambling and kind of not breaking regulative principles but so many people were doing things which are not good for the cleaning of your heart in fact it's getting collecting more on arthas so very recently the people the ladies who were part of this kitty party one of them went through a very difficult phase of her life very difficult so when somebody goes through a difficult place it's play it's like shaking somebody you know and whatever's inside comes out whatever whatever's inside that person will come out and so her boat was really rocking really rocking so when i went to meet her at that time these are all learning experiences so there were people who had done wrong to them to her whole family and because of that they were wrongly being you know lot of things i'm not going to get into details but lot of things were going on in her life and she didn't have any hope but all she told me at that point of time was you know i'm so grateful to krishna that i have devotees in my life and i don't want that anybody even the people who are trying to harm me should get harmed it's easy to say it this is philosophy you know it's our karma i know i must have harmed those people in some way 
it's very nice to say it maybe sitting like this or anywhere but actually when you're going through and making these statements it's a big thing it's not e easy to say that this is what this lady did what a transformation when Krishna enters your life it's just like water and a little bit of sugar inside the whole water becomes sweet then whatever comes out of that is sweet water this is what we experienced so then this, these are kitty parties then clubs people like to go to clubs there's one Mataji who is done, doing such creative preaching like it is amazing I'm I haven't got a chance to speak to her lately but she is doing such maybe most of you don't even know what all is going on so she formed a club club of ladies who hardly ever like to wear any Indian clothes ever they didn't even possess one and uh, she started okay we'll form a club and we'll have many things to do in that and also we'll have some spiritual programs in that so these ladies who were only interested in wearing jewelry and clothes she you know how time place and circumstances when you approach people how you preach to them she told them okay now this is the dress code dress up like this wear this jewelry we'll wear this we'll wear gopi dress and go for this program they started becoming interested it was just a transformation the only jewelry now they are interested in is the mala chanting beads there's so much of a transformation quite a few of them are chanting 16 rounds and they're continuously asking sometimes you know when I meet them that please teach us how to chant properly and these are the same ladies who had nothing to do with Krishna they would come to the temple maybe once in a while but had no interest in you know, taking it more seriously this is what Gopinath's causeless compassion an unlimited reciprocation this is what Gopinath is doing he is reaching out wherever there is faith there is a depression made out there and that holy uh, water coming from Gopinath's feet gets accumulated over there and there is a nice water body which is made and so many more people so many more people are get going around that water body and getting nourished getting nourished because of these two principles and no rejection to anybody concerts people like to go to concerts so as most of you must be knowing how liberation by sound started liberation by sound started by two ladies wanting to do something in you know Kirtan one of them was not even so connected in fact both of them were not exactly connected to the temple yeah they were doing some things they had some done GOST and everything and Prabhu Jinityan and Charan Prabhu came into the picture met them and this whole program started because for whom? because of no rejection people who don't want to come to the temple who like music they don't want to hear philosophy they don't want anything to do with Hare Krishna movement no rejection for them also we did it in you know they did it in nice auditoriums did bhajan kirtan and all these people came and even they from there got connected to the temple and life changed today people come for this liberation by sound and sometimes they are saying wow you know it's such an energy and it's so beautiful and it's so wonderful but it's reaching out to people who are not interested in otherwise coming to the temple there's one more group which began it's called the prayer group I'm just informing you of these things wonderful things which have been happening in the in the present so we had come back from Barsana about four or five years back and one of the Matajis who had gone with us 
she lost her husband. And at that time I saw the unlimited reciprocation of Radha Gopinath. Every day, for so many days, and this Mataji belongs to a Jain family, so in her house, Krishna and you know, all these things were not like she was a devotee, like she had been coming to the temple and attending classes and everything, but she had, she lost her husband and that day some of us reached and see how Gopinath, when Gopinath has touched somebody's life, what happens? She was just, I think, 42 and uh, the body of her husband was still lying over there and I, we, some of us went there and can you imagine the question, how Gopinath is reciprocating, these are reciprocations, otherwise to ask such question at this point of a time shocked me. She asked me with tears in her eyes, Mataji, please tell me what can I do for him now? It was not, why did this happen to me? I'm so young, what is going to happen to me? Because of the principle of service was ingrained by the mercy of Gopinath, she was able to ask this question. Otherwise it's not possible. And for about 15 days, devotees made a group called the prayer group and they every day went to her house to give her association. This was a Jain family and they told us, they said, you know, you please keep coming. When you all are there, she's happy. These are small things, I know, in people's lives. But this shows the unlimited reciprocation of, of the Lord with His devotees. Not a, a single negative thought crossed this Mataji's mind. Not a single negative thought. I've spoken to her so many times. Such clarity. This is what, this is how Gopinath reciprocates. And through this group, one day, we, mm, this, Priya Mataji, one of the Matajis, she got a call from one of her friends. She said, you know, and she hasn't spoken to this lady for 10 years. She doesn't know, but she by chance got a message from somewhere that, you know, Priya, Priya Mataji is doing some uh, you know, spiritual program. So she said, my father is on death, deathbed. Please come. What can I do? So she said, she said, see the thing is that uh, it's, a, it's Sunday today, we'll come tomorrow. She said, no, my father will not survive. He will not survive till Monday. So I, at that time, took guidance from Radha Gopinath Prabhu, what to do with a person who's about to leave his body. And we went there. We, he was in the ICU. We chanted, we read Bhagavad Gita, we put Prabhupada's Kirtan. We did everything. And none of the doctors or anybody disturbed us. They left us alone. Even when they came, he said, no, 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 you all do what you're doing, we'll come later. I think for more than half an hour, actually, we were there for one hour in the ICU. And both of us were so shocked with the reciprocation Gopinath was giving. Then we went to meet her, you know, her and her family. At that time she mentioned uh, that, you know, they have a club and each time Jagannath Rathyatra passes by, they serve them water 
and they keep Bhagavad Gita in their, uh, the, uh, Prabhupada's books in their, in their club. I was shocked. I said, that's why we are here, to reciprocate with what, what they have done for even this much. Gopina doesn't forget. So, although she was not in touch, but Gopinath made sure that they got in touch with us and we went and we became an instrument of reciprocation between him and them. And how? How did she know? Actually, I didn't plan to tell this, but... So, she told us at that time, she said, actually, my, my father yesterday was, had the oxygen, this thing, so he was continuously uh, moving his fingers and trying to say something. So I went up to him, I said, Papa, do you want to say something to me? So she sa he said, yeah. And he was, he's a very educated person, very well. So she, she gave him a paper and a pen, he couldn't write. She got call for a call for an iPad. He couldn't type. He she couldn't understand what he's speaking because the. So she requested the nurse if for a few seconds it could be removed because he seemed a little agitated. So he said. Uh, he said. You know he was pointing finger. He said, Papa, do you want to say something to me? He said, Yeah. Then somehow she could hear, hear him, and he said, Somebody has just died next door. I said, Papa, nobody's died next door. He said, no, you go and ask the nurse and tell, ask her what is his name. So he's, he said, uh, but Papa, I'm, I'm, I've been here and, and you haven't even got up. How do you know somebody has died? He said, just go and talk to the sister. So this girl, lady went out, spoke to the sister. She said, has anybody just died? She said, yeah. Somebody just passed away. He said, uh, what's his name? He said, his name is, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Lamba or something, I can't remember. Actually, I can't remember the name. So we'll just take it as Mr. Lamba, Mukund Lamba. So she came back to her father. She said, Papa, you haven't got up. Yeah, somebody has died. His name is Mukund Lamba. So he how do you know? He said, he came to me. He said, but how did he come to you? He said, yeah, he came to know me and he told me that he's leaving now and next is my turn and I'm leaving in two days. So this happened on Saturday. Sunday she called us and Monday he left his body. So Krishna gave her the intelligence, gave him the time so that devotees could be in called, instruments in the hands of Radha Gopinath could be called and Prabhupada's mercy could have been given. No rejection in unlimited reciprocation and causeless compassion. What to speak of this? There's one Mataji who quietly has been, you know, we reject people dirty, filthy, alcoholics, rejected by their family members, rejected by the society, by everybody, staying nearby. This Mataji goes every day or organizes to go every day, serving them prasad, calling counsellors to counsel these people who have been rejected by their family members also. They are on the road. They have no place to stay. There is no rejection by Gopinath. That is his mercy. All, I realize over a period of time, what is required is Shraddha. If anybody has this much faith, 
because of some sukriti which you know has by the mercy of Radha Gopinath. His mercy is flowing, his mercy is now not only uh, you know in these four walls, it has gone much beyond and touched everybody's lives. So many people have come up, oh we I have seen Prabhupada and now they are connected, they are chanting 16 rounds. They say even a moment of association with a pure devotee does not go in vain. That's what I have been noticing and you know, in whatever people come to me and tell me. And there is a team which we have, which is a wonderful team, where everybody is so dedicated to just serve and please and hope we continue to do the same and thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to sit here and speak all the not qualified.